Hey, I'm Dr. Terence Espinosa. This video is going to continue our discussion of how to set up accordance for translation. The earlier video talked about setting up preferences and showed some basics in terms of how to use a library window, how to use into details window. And then we, we reviewed it all by looking up a word in English and seeing what accordance does to point us to where else the word is used and how the word is translated in the original language. And so that was all useful for, for using the English text. In this video, uh, we're going to talk about how to translate from the Hebrew Bible. And so uh, let's go to the library and I want to open up your Hebrew Bible. You can get there a few ways. You can scroll through. I'm just going to type in Hebrew Bible. And there we are. That Hebrew Bible opens up. You'll note that I have my library window already open. Uh, you'll note that the instant details pane is on the right side of my screen. You can make the instant details pane on the bottom of your screen if you prefer or back on the side. You can make the font bigger or smaller, it's your preference. Okay, so uh, I don't need the commentaries for now for translation, so I'm gonna close the commentary window. If I wanted the Hebrew font to be bigger, probably should um, for, for display purposes. Uh, there we are. Okay, so the Hebrew font is bigger. Now we're going to talk about uh, three different things in this video. The first thing is setting up your interlinear. The second thing is how to use a parallel, and we use them both together in translation. I recommend you do both. And then thirdly, we'll look at live click options. Live click is right here. That is a feature in some versions of logo of Accordance 12 and then certainly Accordance 13. So I'm using Accordance 13 on a PC running Windows 10. So let's start with the interlinear for translation purposes. So over here, top left screen of this Hebrew Bible box, I'm going to say show interlinear, and I'm going to decide which part of the interlinear I want to have and which ones I don't. So the key word, the, the not the key word, the um, Strong's uh, key number, I don't need because we're looking at Hebrew. So we don't need to deal with Strong's or Goodrich Kohlenberg or anyone else. Those are fine. If you don't know Hebrew, but for us, we can ignore that. Lex is the lexical form of the word. So in Hebrew and in Greek, uh, the form of the word in the Bible is not always the same as the dictionary form. So it's nice to see the dictionary form. So we'll leave that open. You don't have to, but I like leaving it open for, for class purposes. The transliteration is how to pronounce that. So if you're early in Hebrew and are still working through the transliteration of your Hebrew, that's fine. This can be a bit of a crutch. And part of this is maybe this is something you should be doing on your own. So this word here, Rashit, is part of Ber Rashit, which is the first word of Genesis 1.1. Uh, you may want to write this transliteration out yourself by reading the Hebrew text. But if you wanted to have this guide here, you can certainly have it there. It's the lexical transliteration. Okay, the words are part of speech. We're going to leave that open by closing it first then showing you part of speech. Part of speech tells you if the word is a, a particle a noun, a verb, or something else, adjective, adverb, it goes on and on. So that's nice to know. We definitely need that for our parsing and translation homework. Tag, nope, tag is the rest of the parsing information. So let's go to the word heavens. Shamayim, ha shamayim, the, ha is the, shamayim, heavens. So the word heavens, shamayim, we see the dictionary form is right here, shamayim. It's a noun. It's a common noun, not an not a proper noun. Um, so it's not saying Abraham. That's a proper name. Uh, this is just a regular noun. So that's what the common part means. Now, if you look here on the interlinear and compare that with the um, instant details pane on the right side of the screen, the abbreviation is different. It's CM here and COMM -M there, but that both means common, not proper noun. Uh, it tells you it's a masculine noun. It tells you it's a plural noun. And it tells you it's an absolute noun, not a construct. A construct noun, you'd add the word of after this. So if it were a construct, it would be heavens of. But since it's an absolute noun, it's just heavens. So all this parsing information is something you should be writing down in your homework. I want to see this, even though we don't necessarily know the details of what all this means, we'll get there. And so especially early in the class, you're writing it down anyway to get into the habit of taking note of what the words are and what, what they what kind of words they are. 
if you think of it as um, putting hashtags on your photos on Instagram or, or other social media, the photo is the photo, but you're all able to tag it with the right communities you think it belongs to, whether it's Visco or whatever is important to you. Um, same with this here. This parsing information tells us that Shemayim belongs to the category of nouns, of common nouns, and this particular example of it is a masculine plural absolute version of the noun. When we get to the nouns in a uh, section of our class, we'll talk more about that. So you do the same for the entire verse or verses that you're translating. So that's the interlinear. Interlinear is right here. It's in the, it looks like a, a series of lines and you mouse over, click on it and you show interlinear and choose which parts to show. The last thing you can show is the gloss. And the gloss is the definition. So if you have that open, that's fine too, especially since we're going to have an inductive work through for our translation this semester. Uh, a gloss is not the definition you may end up using. It might be, but a gloss is your first attempt, your first pass through. So when you translate, you're going to translate a sentence a few times. The first time you're going to look word for word, pronounce it, identify each word and what kind of word it is. And you may even, you should write kind of a word for word translation. That is your gloss. That's your very basic translation. It's usually from the first entry or two of a Hebrew lexicon. Now, once you've gone through the sentence and you've seen how the words all work together, you've seen some of the context there. You may even understand the larger context of the book to which this verse belongs. And so uh, you might smooth out the word, change the phrasing, or, or you still you know, translate the word appropriately. But uh, for example... Uh, let's go back to, to heavens. So heavens is a fine translation. And it says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So you might say God created heaven and earth instead of the heavens. You might say sky and earth because you, you're suggesting that the emphasis here is on the, the physical ground and then everything above the physical ground, however high up that goes and whatever that looks like. That might be show whatever you think Shemayim meant in the first century you would translate it into English today if you're translating in English. And then you decide if you're translating for children, for adults, uh, exactly how much of the nuance is able to brought forth. Those are all bigger decisions by translators. And you really need to have a proper language class. You know, take a year or two or more of Hebrew and same for Greek. And you'll get more familiar with this. Uh, for us, for now, just be familiar with the idea that these glosses are useful, but may not be the words you end up with because there are other translations that the context suggests fit better here. And that's part of that hermeneutical, hermeneutical circle process of reading and translation and study and obviously prayer the whole time. So that's the interlinear. So the interlinear serves as an answer key really for a lot of our translation. And I expect you to use this for translations. Open it up, go through it, take the time to look at each word, pronounce each word, write the kind of word it is. The next thing uh, I wanted to show you is parallels. So in accordance, there is a little button that says add parallel, add parallel. And so let's open uh, with an English Bible. So you can go right, if it's a recent book you opened, you can go right to the recent book you opened, whatever English translation you want. You can also go to texts, and these are biblical texts. And so if you wanted to see it in the King James or Septuagint, LXX, or the Message, or Net Bible, that's another the Bible's a good one, NIV is a good one, ESV is a good one. Those are all fine translations. So uh, pick the one you want. I'm going to go with NIV. Look at that. So on the left side, we still have our Hebrew text with all the interlinear information there. I'm going to shrink it up a little bit uh, just to, so we can see the whole verse. Let's do one more. Um, and you can, of course, make this font size as big or as small as you want. Same for the font of English. Make it as big or as small as you want by clicking on the font size icon. Um, okay. Now, the advantage of this, not only do you have all the parsing information here, but you can also mouse over the word in Hebrew and it'll show you the Greek, the English word and vice versa. Go somewhere. So what's the word for light? You might be asking Genesis 1, 3, light. Well, if you look in the bottom left part of my screen, the Hebrew word there is or, and you'd have to scroll down to, to see the information for it. So let's go right there. Or, okay, it means light. That's nice. Let's go back to our word heavens. There it is. Heavens in English. 
uh, heaven, Shemayim in, in Hebrew, and there's all the parsing information there. And then you also have the instant details guide providing the same information, but it's nice to have open anyway. So when you translate the homework, I expect you, I hope that you would have your interlinear all set up. I'd hope that you have a parallel in English set up, whether you do that now or do that after you translate, at some point you can look and see, and that's always helpful. And this really depends in part on the goals early on, maybe for the first translation or two, have your English text open. But then by the time you get to our third translation, close your English text and just work from the Hebrew. Use the interlinear still, and then smooth it out. And then you check it with, after you translate it, check with your English Bibles, and that'll help help you advance along in the process. All right, so that was a few things to review. We've talked about the interlinear function, and that's what we're looking at now. The parallel function, the parallel is looking at, um, you know, maybe more than one English translation. That's great. Maybe you want to look at it in, um, let's have LXX, Septuagint. Oh, look at that. Glorious. Okay, so it looks like this version of the Septuagint isn't really tagged in a way that, that correlates with the rest, and that's fine, though. So here on the screen, you have the Hebrew of Genesis 1.1. You have the NIV. You have the ESV. Then you have the Septuagint translation, NRK, Epoias, and Hathaias, and it goes on. And that's interesting. If you know Greek in particular, or when you know Greek, to have that open. Um, that was just for fun. Okay, so let me close this up and show you one more function besides the interlinear and besides the parallel. Okay, so I'm going to open my Hebrew Bible again. I'm going to close this for a moment. Now, live click. Live click is a newer option. Now, Accordance has a video specifically on live click. You can Google it and find it. I'll try and link it in our in our uh, classroom uh, management system as well, Blackboard. Uh, but live click. If live click means when you click on a word, it'll do two things. So let's go to Genesis 1.1 and find Shamayim. That's our word for heavens. I triple clicked on it. And it, it opened up two new boxes. So this box here is a lexicon. And, oh, look at it, TLOT. Fantastic. It has all of them here. And if you want to open the rest of the TLOT, for example, you can open it up. And there's a whole entry there. Fantastic. So you can click on whatever lexicon you want. Looks like they ranked it their own way. And TLOT is a fantastic one. If you have a word in there, definitely read that. Uh, Kohlenberger Mounts. It's interesting look how short that is. That's fine. Uh, so this is the first box here is going to be... Um, Oh, there it is. The first box is going to be your lexicons that you have. Great resource. The second box, the live click link will open when you click on a word in Hebrew, is a concordance function. What it's done is it looked for all the places where that word is used in the Bible we were reading. So we're looking at the Hebrew Bible. And so all the places where the word shamayim is used is right here. So 41 hits in 39 verses. Let's see here. It's Genesis, quite a bit in Genesis. Uh, oh, and that's because the range was set to Genesis. Let's see about modifying that range. Um, ah, here we are. Uh -huh. No. Mm-hmm. So this shows us the word usage in that book of the Bible, which is great. There is a way uh, to do that, to look in the entire Hebrew Bible. Range, let's say all. Oh, okay, so this is blending the Hebrew text, which is a left to right text, uh, with... <laughs> with left to right. Uh, there will be another live click video, which will go into the further details of live click because there's more it does besides this with the Hebrew. Uh, we'll, um, oh, here we are. We'll set, we'll set this up more properly at that time. All right, this is uh, me in the future. After the video, I went and wanted to figure it out and add it here in this first video. So the live link function, click live link. And before we click on the word, 
here's what happened. If you go back to your settings, you can hit control plus comma or file, not file, edits and preferences. So either edit preferences or control comma on a Mac is probably Apple comma. Uh, you can find it. Uh, preferences is where you're going. Now there's a whole list and we looked at Amplify in another video. Live link, that's the one. So live link has some options here. And this is where the changes should be made. And this is why I couldn't find it just a few seconds ago. If you go to word usage, this determines where the accordance software is going to look. Right now it's set to current book and that seems to be the default. So uh, we were reading Genesis. So the word Shemayim would have been uh, only in Genesis. But what if you want to see where Shemayim is used in the entire Old Testament or you know any word you're looking for in any part of the Bible, not just the book you're reading, but the entire Old Testament entire text. That's the change to make. So change your word usage from current book to entire text. If you want to create a custom group, you could uh, create a group in the library, but I'm not going to do that. Just the entire text is fine. Uh, so entire text is chosen. Everything else looks good. Uh, lexeme, not inflected. So that means this is looking at the, the dictionary root word not the very particular singular and plural or whatever other inflections are on the Hebrew words. Okay, so that's good. Let's click OK. So now let's go again to Genesis 1. Look up the word Shemayim and live, live click is, is it's checked. So let's go. One, two, three, triple click. And the top box is your lexicons as before, and you can choose a lexicon or just scroll through them all. It gives you a snippet view of each lexicon. You can open up the entire lexicon if you'd like and read the entire entry, um, which would be a good idea. If you click on open, it'll open that lexicon in a brand new box on your screen. So let's go to the, the this one, concise dictionary. Now down here on the bottom of the screen is the, the actual lexicon. So we'll close that for now. Uh, word usage. So word usage now, the word Shemayim is shown to have been used in 395 verses. That's 421 exact hits of the word Shemayim. And scrolling through, uh, there's a lot of Genesis, but look at that. There's Deuteronomy, we saw Exodus, it goes on. So you can scroll through and see all of the places where the word is used. So that's how you search for the entire Bible, not just the book you're reading. Either one is fine, depending on the kind of research you're doing. Um, but there you have... Um, that information and you can always click around so I mean, really accordance is a powerful powerful tool it's uh there's so many things you can do it's best to just play around with it and use it on your own but for us i wanted to get you started with the settings and i wanted to get you started on the tools you need for hebrew translation and also hebrew word study the word study uh, assignment is going to ask you to to do this very thing find a word a specific word you're looking at and find out where it's used in the entire bible and this live click link it is one option for accomplishing that part of the word study. Well, that's it. Let's go out on a review. So this video was looking specifically at your Hebrew translation um, tools to use. Uh, live click, you know, we can use that, but let's do this instead. Let's go back to Genesis 1. Here we are. Uh, we want to add parallel, and we'll use the NIV or ESV, or whatever you prefer, and we'll set up your interlinear. And we'll set it up with this lexicon, uh, part of speech, tag, and gloss. Those are the four, the four uh, things to have clicked for your interlinear. And that's it. That will be the most helpful thing for you for translating for our class. And we'll talk to you next time. God bless you. Bye.